Hey, what's happening? And welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is D, and today we're going to be talking about some problems that y'all have with YA and new adult fantasy. I guess they're not really problems, more like changes that y'all want to see in YA fantasy. And by y'all, I mean my subscribers. So this is a follow-up to a previous video, The Problem with YA and New Adult Fantasy. Around the same time that I posted that video, I also posted my community tab asking like, hey, what are some changes that you would like to see in YA and New Adult Fantasy? I'm gonna respond to a few of those comments. I've also like kind of combined a few because some people were talking about similar things. And so thank you to everybody who commented and engaged with that post and I uh, kept the conversation going. I really appreciate you. If I don't get to you, you know, um, I'm not like, sorry, but just know that I do appreciate you regardless of whether or not your comment was directly responded to or whatever. So first up, Tripwire202 says, I would love to see more playful and or elegant prose. Terry Pratchett style narration, things like that. Many YA books I've read have near identical styles of narration, and I think that's a shame. First off, I don't know who Terry Pratchett is. Don't tell me I don't have the time. And second, like, I definitely see where you're coming from. Like, I, I said something like that in my video where I said, like, there's almost like a YA style or accent that's kind of being developed, much like there's this kind of accent when it comes to like newer pop singers singing and on that video uh cat one of my patrons I, i'm i'm pretty sure it's the same person y'all y'all change your usernames from platform to platform so sometimes i'm not entirely sure but i'm pretty sure this is one of my patrons uh oh totally forgot to do this shout out to my plus ultra don't fret or laughing cat dog my top tier supporter on patreon thank you so much for your support uh, you're helping to ensure that I'm able to keep creating this content and put it out as frequently as I do. Uh, if you also want to help out the channel and gain access to exclusive content, make sure you consider subscribing to my Patreon. Back to what Kat was saying, uh, the reason that a lot of books feel similar is a direct result of publishing not being willing to take risks, which I absolutely agree on. That's not the whole comment that Kat made. Kat made some other really good points, and I appreciate you, Kat, uh, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, probably folding laundry or something like that, because I'm pretty sure that my channel is just lo-fi beats to chill slash study to, but there's no beats. It's just a guy talking about books or maybe an author doing something terrible. It's funny, like every once in a while I've been included on like lists of people recommending booktubers or book talkers to watch or whatever. And they'll go through a list of people, there's maybe like six or seven people on the list, and it'll be like, oh, this person's so insightful and they have such amazing recommendations. This person is just like a great advocate for this community and just seems like so nice and so sweet and so cool and so smart and all this stuff. And they go off on each person for like a minute and a half. And then they get to me like, that dude's funny. That guy's chill. I do laundry to him. And then they keep it pushing. And I think that that's funny. I think some people think that I'm taking it like it's a diss and I'm not. I think it's funny that you can sum me up as laid back, make some goofs sometimes. I'm way off track, I apologize. Anyways, what Kat was saying about publishing not willing to take risks, I absolutely agree with. I see it a lot, and you know, I'm gonna come back to that point later on in the video, but you know, I see it in all branches of the entertainment industry, and you know, all these executives wanna make sure that they make their money and get a big return on their investment so they don't wanna invest in something new that's untested. You know, you know that's why a lot of YA fantasy um, kind of feels as formulaic as a Marvel movie. Um, does anybody still watch Marvel movies? I fell off like around the third Thor, I think, on Tripwire's comment, you know, seeing a little bit more difference in style and authors kind of cultivating a unique voice in their prose and stuff like that I think would be really refreshing because it feels like the genre or the category of young adult fantasy is getting really homogenous and and I understand like and I guess publishing's like well that's a good thing because then we're always going to make like we're always going to get like a like a moderate hit at at worst or something like that but as a reader and as somebody who enjoys consuming various different types of things, it gets really hard to find stuff to recommend to people or stuff to even talk about. You know what I mean? Like if if everything is the same all the time, like my videos end up being like five minutes long. I'm just like, yes, it's it's another one of these. 
but this time she got black hair and green eyes instead of red hair and blue eyes or whatever. I don't, I don't I'm going to bed, you know, and I just don't want to make content like that. And I would love to discuss more varied, unique things, even if it's not always something that I'm going to enjoy. I think being able to like make different commentary is, is a good thing for me personally. And then obviously for the rest of you, it's got to be boring. Like a lot of people who watch this channel read for fun or read for enjoyment um, among other things. And it can't be fun to keep watching. You ever notice like a lot of sitcoms it's like, Oh, what's it about? Oh, it's about a young woman who moves to the city and makes a bunch of oddball friends. Like how many times have we seen that? There was an era for like nine different shows that had that same premise and like the same kind of archetypes of characters. And I feel like we're almost in that era with YA fantasy. And so to break out of that as soon as possible would be, would be hype. Moving on to the next comment. Uh, my BFFAE, my bestest friend forever and ever, reads with Rachel. Scratch all that, none of it's funny. Loki, the creator of this channel, the reason that most of you know who I am, the legend herself reads with Rachel, says, full developed magic systems, more platonic love, and better descriptions. On full developed magic systems, I know it's not YA fantasy, but it is fantasy meant for young people. I highly recommend everybody read or watch Hunter x Hunter. The manga is like not the best looking manga in the world but the anime is dope and it is one of the most like sophisticated power systems i've ever come across another anime manga that's kind of known for having complicated power systems is jujutsu kaisen and it's heavily inspired by hunter hunter in hunter hunter stuff like makes sense and the rules don't break according to my tattoo artist who is way more in anime and manga than i am uh, Togashi, the mangaka for Hunter x Hunter, has a master's degree in game theory, and Gege Akutami, Akutomi, uh, is just a guy. I don't really know where my artist got that information. I tried to look it up, couldn't confirm it, but I also trust him, uh, at least enough with uh, putting something permanent on my skin. But in but in actuality, I do strongly recommend, like any fantasy writers, dip your toes into shonen manga or anime, just like to study. I also like, you know, when I teach my students, I would say like read outside of your genre to see if there's anything to learn, you know, or like consume stuff outside of your genre. Like um, one of my students, it was working on a story that was like vampire hunters, but I was like, yo, what if you just threw in a bunch of spaghetti Western influences or something like that? So they ended up consuming a bunch of Westerns and it, it turned out to be like a really fun, cool story. Spin of Fate by A.A. A. Vora is also like apparently inspired by Naruto. And that is one of the most unique magic systems I've read in YA fantasy uh, ever. And also, yeah, I've read Spin of Fate. You can stop asking now. While we're talking about magic systems, I also saw a few comments were like, Ayo, leave shadow magic alone. And I get that. Like, I think we're all tired of people trying to replicate the success of A Court of Thorns and Roses. And I, I don't know if that's what the series is called or if it's called something else. I don't care. But I think that that created almost like archetypes of characters, the edgy shadow boy, the grumpy golden boy and all that shit. And it's left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths when it comes to shadow magic. I don't know if I want to see people like, Stop doing shadow magic because, you know, going back to Naruto, one of my favorite characters uses shadow powers. And I have this secret working project that, like, I'm probably never going to release. Like, you're never going to get your hands on it. I'm just going to print out, like, a copy for me and my friend Lorianne because she's the best. Uh, but one of the villains in that uses shadow magic. So, you know, like, I can't knock it. But I do understand the fatigue, especially when... Uh, it's always like this kind of brooding, edgy, over six foot dude, which leads me to like a comment that uh, Gilly mentioned was wanting to see magic users not line up with like the magic stereotype, like shadow magic users being really edgy or, or broody or something like that. And I agree. I think that's really interesting. I don't, you know, it's funny, like outside of YA fantasy, I don't always feel that way. I don't pick up on it because in a lot of shonen, there will be characters that are kind of different. Like their their power almost contrasts their personality. Like in One Piece, Sakazuki can turn into lava, but he is cold blooded. Or in Fire Force, like everybody has some variation of fire wielding, bending something or other, and but they all have like very different, not very well fleshed out personalities. So. You know, outside of YA fantasy, I do experience that a fair bit. But within YA fantasy, I think, I, I honestly think it's mostly just the shadow magic that I notice it with. 
Um, I haven't seen a ton of people. I haven't I haven't read a bunch of characters that have like fire magic and they're really hot tempered or something like that. Um, but I could see that getting really boring and old if you read more YA fantasy than I have. I think I mentioned this before, but a lot of fantasy that I've read, I've read since becoming a booktuber. And so like, I'm not as well read in the category or genre or whatever. A book that comes to mind that has a shadow magic user, but it, it the magic itself is different. Like its mechanics work differently, but also the character's personality isn't uh, really edgy or whatever is Sinner's Isle by Angela Montoya. And I'll put these recommendations or whatever recommendations in the description below. Raph, make a note of that. I don't know why this reminds me of it. And I'm getting a little off track or like losing track of my notes. And I apologize again. Um, this is a very like, I'm in a weird headspace today, man. Something that a colleague of mine has said a couple of times is that there are people who romanticize being a writer more than they romanticize writing. And I think, unfortunately, we're kind of in a time where there are a lot of people who romanticize being a writer more, more than writing are the ones who end up with like publishing contracts or getting book deals or whatever. And it sounds so pretentious to say this. And I also have no way of backing this up, but I think part of that is just because like, because they would rather just like do the thing and they want to be like whoever they read that they enjoyed, they're willing to not, they're not as willing to or not as inclined to take creative risks and try to come up with something new. They just want their own version of whatever was successful. You know, like like in music, I meet a lot of people that just want to be Taylor Swift. They just want to be John Mayer, Ed Sheeran, Phoebe Bridgers, or whomever, and they're not really interested in trying to come up with a unique blend of influences or, or try to find out who they really are. They just want to be like whoever they listen to. And I think... That's true for any art form, but I see it a lot more. I see it being like rewarded a lot more in publishing than other fields. Going back to Rachel's comment, talking about more platonic love. There are also a bunch of comments asking for like less romance. I feel that, you know, like I not a big romance kind of guy. Obviously, like I like a cute moment, I like a little sweet romance, but like the romances are never sweet. For this channel, I've read like more romance than I ever thought I would in my life. And most of it's really upsetting. And I would love to see more platonic love. I am a sucker for the power friendship trope. Not as big a fan of the friends we made along the way, but that's fine. I will take that if it means we get a breath of fresh air. And I think it's dope to show younger audiences or just like people in general that friendships can also be fulfilling and it's not all about the romance or whatever. I, I think that this like overemphasis on like heteronormative relationships are what's going to complete you is like kind of harmful and it's just not true. You know, like me and my wife are, we're good. We're solid. I love my wife. She's the best. But like, we also understand that we are not the be all end all for each other's like needs when it comes to, like socializing or whatever. I think trying to put that on one single person, like you're all that I need uh, f like in terms of like community and stuff is harmful. It's like a lot of pressure to put on someone and it's just going to set you up for disappointment. So me and my wife, we like really try to f like pour into our friends and like build a network where we have like friends as individuals and friends as a couple and all that stuff. And that's really important to us. And I love all my friends. I don't love all my friends. That's not true. There's some that are treasured acquaintances, but I deeply appreciate the role that a lot of my friends play in my life. And I think that they help me be a better partner and also, and now I'm going way off script again, but yeah, platonic love and just having like a story based on like friends or siblings or just something else, you know, would be great. And, you know, I, uh, I, there were some comments asking for more ace representation or a romantic storylines and stuff like that. And I just thought that that would be really interesting because again, I think that, it's just kind of oversaturated with too much, too much romance and too much like faded mates and, and you guys have to come together. And if you don't, the world's going to end and all this bullshit. And it, it's, it's a lot. And we just need like some changes of pace. You know, I saw a comment that was like, sometimes these, romanticy books have like really interesting premises or some they're not even marketed as romanticy they're just re marketed as fantasies and the premise sounds really cool the world's really cool and then all of that gets like pushed to the back for the sake of this romance that 
it's probably between two characters that are pretty shitty if we're honest so i get that i feel that i would way rather immerse myself in an interesting creative world than see some main character try to smash and on the third part of rachel's comment uh better descriptions i don't know just be better at writing i guess i'm i'm joking i've said this before but i get the sense that a lot of these like ya fantasy writers that are trying to replicate uh game of Th no not fuck court of thorns and roses i think a lot of them try to do this like pretty purple prose thing and it just doesn't work because they're trying to sound poetic but they've never dabbled in poetry they don't read poetry they don't really know why some poetry is beautiful and some of it's like nonsense and all that stuff or how there could be beauty in the nonsense depending on what you're trying to write. And so again, I know I have a few writers like who watch my videos or whatever. I strongly recommend read manga or watch some anime just to like learn more about world building and power systems, read some poetry, attend a workshop, write some poetry, something you know and when you're reading poetry read diversely those are my recommendations so far i'm i'm giving homework this video come back to this video and comment your favorite poetry book and your favorite anime i would actually be super interested to know people's favorite poetry book and people's favorite anime that'd be that'd be hype phantom fireside kind of echoes a lot of what rachel said but adds bring in some mythical beings dragons and fair all i hear about nowadays uh and more male leads please and we've had so many female pro pro that pro that oh my god we've had so many female protagonists uh it's not fun anymore. On other mythical beings, uh, Master of Jin, the Golem and the Genie, uh, Spin of Fate. Again, I've read it. Shut up. I like the concept of dragons. I watched American Dragon Jake Long when I was a kid. Um, you know, the dragons and like Dragon Ball and all these other like stories that I really enjoy. So I like dragons. I am kind of tired of reading about them. I am going to read So Let Them Burn and Dragon Fruit. Don't worry, leave me alone. But, you know, I'm sure there's like mythical creatures that we don't hear enough about. I would like somebody to do Griffin some justice somehow, please and thank you. Because uh, the Fourth Wing series, whatever that's called, uh, the M Empyrean who fucking cares, did Griffin's real dirty for no fucking reason. What do you mean they can't fly? They're fucking birds. Screw you. I, so I need somebody to advocate for a Griffin dignity and uh, write a Griffin book. But there's like so many other things that could be written about that would, would be interesting. Um, or, or hey, maybe there's like a, a mythical creature that hasn't been invented yet. I don't know. Also, I want to add to this list. Um, I'm also tired of vampires. So dragons, fey, vampires... I'm, I'm over it. On more male leads, one of my patrons also said this. Uh, thank you, monster enthusiast. I never thought that I would read something like that. You know, <laughs> like my f subscriber base is 90% women and non-men, which I, I appreciate. Thank you. It's like the opposite of that TikTok sound where the guy's like, yeah, men, boys. Feels like I have bad opinions. It's like the opposite. I think that's lent itself to like, I've read some of my other friends' comment sections. And even though I get a lot of like really long, pretty racist essays from time to time in my comment sections, it's not nearly as bad as some of the shit that gets said to my friends. I would love to see more male protagonists in YA fantasy. You know, just like for one, I think it would in entice not entice but like it would encourage more younger guys to read for fun and to kind of i think i'm told i don't know where this comes from or if this is true but i'm told that there's this perception that reading is for for girls now and i spent a lot of time at one of my jobs just trying to convince my male students that it's okay to write or it's okay to like express yourself through the written word or something like that and you can read and that's doesn't make you less of a man and so it'd be cool to see more kind of like examples of healthy masculinity young and to have young men be able to identify with characters going through different things you know i think it would help young men feel more seen feel more included feel a bit less alone because i think that there is i think because i believe that there are a lot of like young dudes who are feeling a little like excluded or, or not cared about or, or something and like toxic masculinity and like motivational culture and all that shit is very isolating. And so like to kind of counteract that through story would be beautiful and shade. I can hear you. 
I'm doing my best. I work like 60 hours a week. Plus, I do this. I'm very tired. There are a couple comments just saying like, can we have like lower stake stories, you know? And can the main romance not be intertwined with those extremely high stakes, please? I totally get that. The idea of like the fate of the realms or the kingdoms or whatever the fuck being like hinged on these two 17 year olds ability to communicate with each other and whether or not they're going to like smooch. Terrifying. So stupid. I don't like it at all. I've never liked it. Even as a 17 year old, I was like, w what does this have to do with anything? You know, like why is the planet going to explode if these two don't get married? You know? And I wonder if some authors raise the stakes like that to make them like planetary cosmic or whatever, because they want to make the story compelling and they don't really know how to do that just by making the character, by making the readers care about the characters enough. I don't know, because like the fate of the world can't, the, the fate of, I, I don't think the fate of the world is a trope, but I feel like that can get tiresome and it can just be a story about the individual going on a quest. It can still have stakes and it can still be, have like action and danger and all this stuff, but it could just be about whatever's going on. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, this is such a dumb example, but like John Wick, I haven't finished that movie series or caught up with it. So like, I don't actually know if what I was going to say is true. Uh, the point was just that like sometimes a compelling story can just be about the individual and there can still be all this, the stuff that makes a YA fantasy book good, uh, but it doesn't have to be like, or the realm will perish or whatever. There are a number of different comments kind of expressing the same thing that like the the characters in some YA books don't feel like actual teenagers. Like they read more like young adults and then new adult. Sometimes they read like teenagers. I think part of that is because like the categories are not well defined. As I said before, new adult, I think is like a new thing. And, um, you know, some people say like, it's because authors don't understand that young adults about asking, who am I and new adults about asking, okay, now what? And I don't know if I agree with that because like you can, like there, there could be coming of age stories for somebody in their mid thirties because you're a very different person from at 32 than when you're 25 or you're a different person when you're fucking 40 than when you're 30. I think there's this misconception that life kind of is just kind of like coasting from 30 until you die and that's like absolutely not true you know like i have friends who are like in their 50s and they're talking about like going back to bed anyways doesn't matter and i think another thing is that some authors uh they write adult fantasy but because they're women and publishing is steeped in misogyny they end up just getting pushed into the ya category you know there was that meme that was like if brandon sanderson was brenda sanderson uh, he'd be a YA author or something like that. And I don't want to have a discussion about that meme. I don't want to talk about Brandon Sanderson. I know I've mentioned him a couple of times because I do fantasy and he's just like that guy. I don't care. It's like when you have certain discussions about rap, you just end up mentioning rappers even if you don't listen to them. You know what I'm saying? And I also wonder if maybe authors will change the age of their characters, make them younger because that makes them more appealing or whatever because there's this like weird conception that people don't want to read about adults. Uh, I'm gonna mention another manga because I can. Um, it's also an anime that just came out, Kaiju number eight, the protagonist, it's like a battle shonen, but the protagonist is 32. And I enjoyed that. Like I think a lot of people are like, oh, whoa, it's crazy. This is about an adult, but it's the thing that we like. Um, and like, I think that that's cool, and I think that there's room for more of that, and I think that a little bit more intentionality about, like, like how old your characters are, a little bit more, like, research into that, you know? It's like, there are some times where you see, like, a movie about a teenager, uh, and they use social media, but the movie's written by somebody in their, like, 50s who doesn't know how high school operates anymore, and doesn't know how the internet works. I feel like you can see some of that in YA and New Adult Fantasy now. I'm not saying that only younger people can write YA or, or New Adult. I just think that if you're going to, you have to, like, talk to or learn more about youth culture, if, especially if you're trying to appeal to youth culture. Now... I say all that kind of like speculating. I hadn't really thought too much about this one. The only time I was really like the fact that this is a teenager 
feels really forced and doesn't make a ton of sense was legend born. Cause it was like, why can't this person just be a freshman in college? Like, why did we have to have this like program and all that stuff? Um, I, it felt like just a, an extra detail that didn't need to be for me personally, but I also didn't love legend born. So like, that's, that's neither here nor there. And lastly, there were a bunch of comments just asking for more diversity in their storytelling or in storytelling, you know, more queer romances, more trans MCs, more ace representation, more disabled characters. And I would, I would love to see something like that too. I think like we were talking about before, uh, the publishing industry is steeped in, well, like all the oppressive systems that our society is steeped in racism, misogyny, homophobia, ableism, all this stuff. And and because they're not willing to take the risk, it's like, why would they, you know, spend money on giving marginalized people a voice, letting marginalized people see themselves in their stories or whatever? Like, that's super risky. And I'm sure that there's, like, publishing houses that are being created or that are starting up right now that I don't know about that are doing the work of... uh uh, trying to advocate for more diverse storytelling. I know um, book talker, uh, author Michael LeBourne has a company called DYB Publishing, and he's doing the work of trying to elevate black and brown voices. And I, I'd love to hear about more publishers that are doing stuff like that. Because like I said, because like I said in my last video, like humanity is this beautiful tapestry. But if the only thing that people kind of see is white, then what's the fucking point? And the executives in publishing houses and stuff, they don't really care about telling interesting stories or doing something new. You know, like they're afraid to take risks. They just want to make their money and uh, they want to profit off of our entertainment. And I think it comes down to like consumers asking for more, demanding more, and showing, I guess in a way showing that there is like money to be made in elevating these voices, which can be kind of tricky because some of these like marginalized communities that deserve to be represented are also really small. Um, so I, I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I don't have the answers for all that. I just, I agree with that. I would love to see more of that, you know, like I, I've said before, I have students who represent a bunch of different communities in the schools that I work in. I would love to see them see themselves in literature, you know, it, you know, poets that remind them of them, fantasy characters that tell them that they can be the hero of their story, um, regardless of what, regardless of whatever stacked against them and their identities. I get really irritated with folks who are like, oh, people trying to force diversity or whatever. It's so hateful that they're trying to force inclusion or whatever. It's like, nah, they're just trying to include people. And you just don't like that they exist and you don't want to admit that you're a bigot, you know, because you're lying to yourself or whatever. And that's like a whole other thing. And I don't want to get too deep into that because I'm not like the most serious guy, you know, <laughs> like, um, but I, I would like to see some more diversity. And, and I, there was this other comment that I saw is like, I want to see more creativity and passion for storytelling. And I think I kind of touched on it before, but yeah, I'd also love to see, I would love if the publishing industry as a whole was willing to give more support and more opportunities to authors who have the passion uh, to tell a beautiful creative story and also have a voice from a perspective that isn't, that isn't already uh, oversaturating the market. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching this video, especially if you made it to the end. If you like this video and you want to help out the channel, please like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell. And if you want to support the channel even more, consider subscribing to my Patreon. There you get an extra rant review video from me once per month, as well as access to my private Discord server, the Don't Fret Club Discord server, where you can chat with me and a bunch of really lovely people. Like these are some of the nicest people I have ever chatted with on the internet. They are dope. And we're talking about books, movies, anime, recipes, uh fucking showing our artwork and pictures of pets and all kinds of stuff it's really fun and we also do a book club where we get together and talk about a book that we read pick a different book each month you know what a book club is so i don't know why i'm telling you this and it's great so if any of that sounds interesting or exciting to you make sure you consider subscribing to my patreon special shout out to my super duper don't fretters keisha cassie knightsmith and oliver i appreciate you so much 
and how you're helping me to create this content and put it out as frequently as possible. Everyone else, thank you again so much for watching this video. My name is D. Don't fret. I'll see you next time. Peace out.